Ottoman Empire accepted the crisis offer from France. Acquire East Macedonia. So, just East Macedonia. That's west. Wait, east is here, but that's owned by Greece? Oh, okay. I thought it was flipping to the Ottomans, but anyway. I guess the deal is the Ottomans said, okay, we'll give it to Greece to avoid the crisis. Yeah, that's probably what's going on. And yeah, Russia's always going to be pretty big in this game. Man, it'd be nice if they went to war. Uh, Bakura, who are you? What's your deal with? You're allied with Kiva. You're protected by Russia. Grrr. Damn it, Russia. You're protecting all my possible targets. And then the UK over here, obviously, is a whole other thing. Yeah. It's like, my instinct is going to be, you know, go war, 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 but... You think Paradox games are getting simplified? I don't think so one bit. They're getting cleaner. They're getting better at presenting information. But they still have a shit ton of systems. Hey, Railroad. Mm -hmm. Paradox has gotten a lot better about, like, removing systems that are not clear. But there's still a lot of it's systems and operating chocolate. and interoperating. Hey, no one hears what he appears. Thank you very much. I'm off for the Christmas break. But you're still working on Vicky too. Buy some nice whiskey and put it under the tree for me. That sounds lovely, no one. That sounds really good. Hope, yeah, you know, people are working or on their break or everything. I hope everything's going well for everyone, though. Mm -hmm. Do, do, do. This Paradox game would probably be my style, but so dense the learning curve. That's the thing. I like games that are based on industry and trade, right? Some of my favorite aspects of EU4 are the trade system. I love the economic model, say, Railroad Tycoon um, or, or Transport Fever and things like that. Um, but the problem is this trade system is so complicated. Like, even Paradox didn't really understand it that well. Like, kept having problems with, like, the world economy basically just, you know, crashing um, and everyone going bankrupt. And it's like, how do you tweak the sliders to make it work? It's such an opaque complicated system um that it's really not possible to truly understand it um which is too much and that's not the same as you know the good complexity is the kind that leads to good strategic decisions not okay there's a bunch of stuff happening behind the scenes that i don't understand okay let's go and uh let's go and, and military up here Here, we'll just uh, we'll just grab the cheapest techs and we'll just try to build up. Victoria three needs a total trade rework. Yeah, I mean, I've, if there is a Victoria three at any point, it will look considerably different from two. But I mean, the same thing happened going from EU three to EU four. You know, they got rid of the sliders for the tech and replaced it with monarch points, and it it's a simpler system, but has led to such fantastic, interesting gameplay. Um, but then they applied the Monarch Point idea badly to Imperial to Rome. And then they pulled back from that at this point, which has made the game a lot better. Um, yeah, they can gain consciousness. Isn't Wiz working on Victoria 3? And that certainly nothing's been announced. Do, 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 do. Did I build that, that dude? Are you still building? Oh, you probably auto, um, yeah, you auto-merged over here. You gotta go that way, buddy. Would you like if EU5 was a sphere map, like Imperator, but crazier? Um, Imperator's not actually a sphere map. If you're talking about the way the camera pans, it's actually just a trick with rotating the camera, and it wouldn't work. It's not, it's not truly spherical. It's still just a flat map, um, and, but they're just panning it sort of at an angle because they only have to show a portion of the world. It's actually a really easy trick to do when you're not trying to do the whole world. But as soon as you get to the point where you're going like south of the equator, um, that trick doesn't work anymore. And I did a whole tutorial series on my Quill 18 Creates uh, uh, channel a while ago about making a true like world generator. And it was so much work to get it to like do the projection because you can't project the sphere onto a flat surface. There's no way to do it. So you can't have continuous scrolling. What you have to do is constantly sort of like pop things out and then pop things in based on your local coordinates and that kind of distortion. And then, yeah, it's so bizarre. It's so bizarre. And I never, ever, ever want to deal with map projections ever in my life. Ever. Ever. It's terrible. 
That's the same reason why Imperium doesn't do actual round worlds. Like, you can go, you can go around the world, but there's like, there's effectively a seam. You get here and it's effectively teleporting you to the other side. And the, the poles are off limits because generating the, the round world stuff, um, I mean, you can do it, but you have to make so many other sacrifices that for gameplay purposes, it's really not worthwhile in most of those games. So we're still sitting on like infinitude money trying to expand oh there we go railroads trying to expand everything we can because it's railroads over here boom and forts i think we're doing all the states are getting all their stuff um i guess we could max out our naval bases we don't have a navy right now but at some point we might point defense system or grab this because it's cheap it'll go quick and they all lead to some inventions that can be handy. More organization. Um, alliance offer from... Wait. These guys. We're still allied with Russia. Well, tell you what. We'll do it. That might be useful, actually. I'm going to do another round of sucking up to the other world powers to see... If something might change in the future. Whatever. We'll even make friends with the United States. And we still have infinitude money. How's our education? 70% literate. That's pretty good. Big problem with flat worlds is cats push everything off. Nice. Hey! Plus one defense on all our units. That's great. Okay. Take a look over here. 100% recon, 100% siege. Uh, 90 and 90. Yeah, this is a fairly large army. Although, if we all we did is pull a few dudes out. Like, pull one artillery out. That's not what we want to do. We've got five. I only see four. Does an engineer count as an artillery in that list? Oh, yeah. Interesting. I would have thought they'd fight, fight under uh, infantry, but sure. There you go. So that those numbers work out. Let me move you out of here. And so we're going to build five guards. One, two, three more artillery. And then another hussar. Victoria 2 is a paradox game. We always have something to do at peace instead of waiting for. Um, well, I mean, CK2. Honestly, the wars in CK2 is like... Pfft. Take them or leave them. Not, not much value to them there. That's not where the fun is, right? There's enough chaos that goes on in there. Um, but it's probably true for EU4. EU4 doesn't have as many peacetime activities. As many buttons for you to push. It's been an option for expansions since China can... Uh, who's, who's these blue dudes? Oh. Well, you're allied to the Chinese Empire, but that is it. And I'm betting Britain would join in. Oh, I justified... Oh! Did they... They just de-imploded. We might do a little uh, war justification anyway. Uh, synchronized heavy support for more defense, signal detachment, engineer siege bonus, Dragoon uh, Hussar reconnaissance bonus, which is a really nice social psychology, which is going to increase consciousness in non-colonial states. People are going to want more reforms. Yeah, they're great power, and... We can take them! Yeah, I'm sure they do have a huge army. Yeah, it's pretty big. Now, the Brits... Yeah, not that big. I mean, we'd need the Brits to join in. There's just no way around it. Let's um, let's actually get some of these prestige gains over here. Because we've lost some of our position. We still haven't gotten to a secondary power. Yeah, what's our tech? Oh, they're only at five. Are they still an unsiv? 
No, they're great power, but they're teched as if they weren't. Hold on. I don't know. Can we do it if we just get more tech? And it really depends on if the, uh, the UK joins. And I don't know where they pull their troops out. They're not in a war right now. I don't see... Oh, there's 77 over here. 79. Okay. 80 over here. I guess we got copper pants down. Free press. Sure. I don't know. I think we do need to grab these prestige boosters. Just because it will make a difference to get us to the next level. Um, and then over here, you're upgrading. You're still very uh, prosperous, so we'll upgrade you some more. There's no unemployed people anywhere. Um, we are encouraging clerks, encouraging craftsmen. I think it's still fine. We got an hour left to the stream. We may we may actually do a YOLO war against uh, China here by the end of things. We will see. Die factories worth the investment. Yeah, so it's already making money. Let's level it up as well. It's already making money and it's going to be helping our throughput. Uh, oh, that's silk. Is it the dyes here or is it for fabric? Yeah, I guess it's the fabric. Yeah. So they're getting an extra 12 and a half percentage production bonus. Which is excellent. None of the other factories are particularly profitable. But yeah, we're making, like, we could be the world's bank here. Yeah, often with my nations, I actually prioritize getting prestige boost ones, because if you can get these shared prestige when they're still worth more than one, it's a really nice way to rank up quickly. And it is really important to rank up. It's also really important to have a lot of prestige, because it has major impacts on how you um, how you can buy and sell in the world market. Well, mostly how you can buy to the world market. Yeah, I think I will... I mean, I know, like, military tech versus China would be nice. But let's. the sooner we get the prestige, the sooner it pays off. We don't need the military right now. Coming straight for us. That is a lot of rebel, uh, revolutions, but we're okay. And yeah, your ratio is okay as well. Oh, you don't have, um... You don't have siege. Smack all these guys around. We got a lot of forts just all over the place, so sieging takes a little longer. Might be worth manually buying up a big weapon stockpile, and that's true. Got our CB against you. Um, right, so we didn't build a siege engineer. May as well spend it. Yeah, control clicking is your friend to be able to do everything in a state. You just have to, like, find your states again. At least you don't need a navy against China. That is true. But I will say this. A navy is a really good way to boost your military power. And get higher up on that world ranking. Uh, I'm going to go and expand this factory again. I mean, this one's profitable. Let's expand it as well, although we don't quite have enough workers right now. But I think it's going to be worth investing, since it does take a long time to build. See all of our building over here. Province construction is ridiculous. Ooh. There you go. And some more forts. Leper convoy is expensive AF. Making all the, uh, the navy stuff is a pretty good way to um, um, make some money. Remember to mobilize before the war. That's true, too. So, does mobilizing... Does it give you actual troops right away? It turns them to soldiers. Yeah. 
So do we want to do it? So they don't have any troops themselves. It's just China. We have a million troops, but no tech. No military tactics. And again, Great Britain is here. Mobilized troops are only um, those, yeah. Um, and yeah, I think you can war deck when you're mobilized. All right, let's do it. Let's give it a try. What could possibly go wrong? So we're going to let the mobilization kick in. What could possibly go wrong? That's a lot of troops all of a sudden. Getting attrition. Um... Move you out over here. So, I don't war against you. Uh, I declare war against China. We're going to acquire a state. Um, we want to acquire the state of Tibet. I hear it's free. Maybe we have to go something else. First of all, is it counting as colonial? No. Because, I mean, it's these guys. I can't declare war against them directly. Or is it the country of Tibet? No. State of Tibet. It's a sub-state? Oh, so it would be... It would be, what, a different CB? I don't know, I guess it's fine. Then we'll just ask for King Hay. We can add the other one uh, once the war starts, if it's going well. Non-alphabetical listing. Oh, there it is, right over here. All right, it's calling. The UK will accept, Nepal will, Bhutan won't. Uh, maybe what I'll do, actually, I won't hit this button. I'll call them in manually. So then they won't get a refuse. Okay, can some, can something coastal? Actually, that's kind of a good idea. Why don't we, yeah, ask for Guangdong. I like it. Or we go for, yeah, that's the island over here. Yeah. All right, that's cool. All right, we've declared war on the Chinese Empire. Should we have saved first? Nah, this is fine. What could possibly go wrong? I'm confused. Okay, so I'm at war with Tibet. This is Tibet. I can't walk into Tibet. But they're at war with me. Passable Mountain? Doesn't say anything about it. It's whiskey and chocolate! Hey, Shadow! Look at the border. The border looks... Does the blue line mean I can't cross? Hey, 
Hey, Shadow, thanks for the contribution to the Skin Chocolate Fund. Welcome to me being confused about things. Hey there, Quill, long time viewer lurker. Been watching you ever since the Civ 5 Greece One City Challenge. Hey, oh my God, that was a long time ago. You know what I almost did on Saturday? Or actually last Wednesday, Civ 4. Might still happen. Uh, although not this Wednesday, because this will be Christmas Day. Uh, I just wanted to say my favorite streamer. Thanks for the many hours of entertainment. Have a Merry Christmas. Same to you, Shadow. Thank you very much for that. Cheers to you. Blue borders are impassable. Huh. Which will make it annoying, because, like, so we're not truly adjacent to one another here. Even just moving within my own country is going to be kind of annoying. Well, I'm a little concerned as to what the implication is here for our war, but... All right. Blue dotted lines of the Himalayas. I guess so, yeah. All right, I guess that's fair. We're gonna get so much attrition. Who put these mountains here? Did you donate? Uh, De Rorge, you can get information just down below. There's a donation bouton. You can follow that if you'd like. Okay, more prestige. Which is great, but now we need, um, we just need the military. Um, I mean, just the rifle improvements are always so good. I'm wondering about one of the others because it's a little faster, but no. Let's get the bolt-action rifles. So much attrition! Yeah, our Wargle's up, uh, well, it's down here, I guess, but yeah. 